good afternoon and everyone am i am i audible yes you are now audible thank you sir a very warm afternoon to everyone present here today i deeksha tyagi on behalf of law level up welcome you all to this session on international perspective of the regulations on cryptocurrency today as a keynote speaker we have a very senior industry expert mr vijay pal dalmia with us so is a practicing advocate for over 36 years he has regularly advised and independently handled a wide variety of cases relating to civil commercial corporate partnership family and property disputes since 2006 so has associated with bash associates advocates which is a leading law firm in in india by merging his own independent practice and became a partner at bash presently he is heading intellectual property information technology and cyber laws commercial advisory and litigation civil and criminal litigation arbitration sports gambling and gaming laws white collar crimes and anti money laundering laws and in in bash associates as well so has also advised clients on legal issues relating to blockchain and cryptocurrency and i would like to inform everyone that sir is one of the very early industry experts who started writing on very minute intricacies about the blockchain and cryptocurrencies including the area of arbitrage which is still uh, very less talked about he also wrote several articles on classification of cryptocurrency way back uh, in 2015 16 and 17 we welcome you so and we are very thankful that we have you today as a keynote speaker thank you very much for giving me this opportunity and uh, our topic for today is analysis of cryptocurrency regulations international perspective now here when we start we have to first understand what is the nature of cryptocurrencies and how these cryptocurrencies are traded or managed so when we look at the term cryptocurrencies first of all we have to understand these are not currencies these are not fiat currencies means these are not the currencies which are issued by the central bank of a country like reserve bank of in india so the question is what is a cryptocurrency the before the budget of this year there were various interpretations that were being given to cryptocurrencies some people were treating it as goods falling into the category of software in any case these will not fall into the category of services even putting cryptocurrencies in the definition of goods was very difficult because these cryptocurrencies have or do not have any intrinsic inbuilt values these do not perform any functions these are a kind of code only which can be transferred from one person to another by various means which are available but for the first time 
in the uh, budget of 2022 a definition has been given and we can take a cue from the same that how the indian law is going to treat cryptocurrencies in the budget of 2022 the cryptocurrencies have been included in the category of virtual digital assets under the provisions of the income tax act virtual digital assets means any information code number or token so definitely going by the definition that has been given under the income tax act this year in the budget cryptocurrency will fall into the category of some kind of information or maybe a code or maybe a number or a token uh, and yeah. this, yes uh, i'm so sorry to interrupt you but uh, we are unable to see you so you are unable to we are unable to see you so okay i am sorry video is not i am sorry i am i am sorry i am sorry i am very sorry. no problem so no problem okay so uh <coughs> so i was on the aspect of cryptocurrencies so the earlier confusion regarding the cryptocurrencies have been to some extent done away with by defining and bringing cryptocurrencies into the category of virtual digital assets now when we talk of virtual digital assets which which may contain any information or a code or a number or a token generated through cryptographic means or otherwise by whatever name called providing a digital representation of value exchange with or without consideration with the promise or representation of having inherent value or functions as a store of value or a unit of account at and which can be transferred stored traded electronically so with this definition under the income tax act we have come out of the confusion to some extent because this is a definition that has been given under the uh, income tax act but what is the definition going to be under gst laws or foreign exchange management act etc that is yet to be seen but still we have some guidelines available with us now while understanding the concept of cryptocurrencies we have to understand one thing that cryptocurrencies can be moved from one exchange to another whether in india or outside india from outside india to india so the movability of cryptocurrencies that is virtual digital assets is very easy and it can be taken from one exchange to another it can be can uh, stored in a uh, hard wallet it can be carried personally or through various other means so when we are discussing all these aspects merely because of the movement of cryptocurrencies these cryptocurrencies acquire the 
uh, acquire the uh, the characteristics of having internet characteristics of being international in nature so if you are buying a cryptocurrency in india you can transfer or store these cryptocurrencies outside india maybe in an exchange like binance in malta or after taking these cryptocurrencies out of india storing in an exchange like binance you will be able to sell it or transact this cryptocurrencies at binance with ease so similarly you may buy some cryptocurrencies outside india like on exchange like binance and you you can easily transfer those cryptocurrencies in india to an indian exchange so what is the nature of these transactions whether these transactions will fall into the category of import or export or not as far as keeping these cryptocurrencies in your account whether in india or outside india this same will be treated as treated in possession of a person who is in india so the location of the same will be treated as in india even if these are stored in some exchange out of india but the moment you transact with these cryptocurrencies outside india or you bring some cryptocurrencies from outside india to india the international nature and character of these cryptocurrencies will come into operation let us further understand, understand this one concept when you are transferring these cryptocurrencies out of india then and if you are trading with those crypto these cryptocurrencies then this will be falling into the category of export of cryptocurrencies from india similarly if you are bringing these cryptocurrencies to india and whether trading or not irrespective of that thing merely bringing of those cryptocurrencies in india will fall into the category of imports import to india so now we have to understand that what are the laws that are going to be attracted in case of these type of transactions we have to also understand what are the consequences of import and export of these cryptocurrencies whether in india or outside india when you are transferring these cryptocurrencies out of india and doing some commercial transactions which is different from merely storing these cryptocurrencies in a foreign exchange foreign crypto exchange like i have already said this will fall into the category of export the moment we say that there is an element of import and export the rules relating to fema will come into operation various guidelines of 
रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया रिलेटिंग टू एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज एंड इंपोर्ट ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज विल कम इन टू ऑपरेशन we will be required to comply with all these master directions and the guidelines issued various other guidelines issued by the reserve bank of india as well as fema laws now before further dwelling into the aspects relating to cryptocurrencies and their international nature we have to also understand that we are supposed to make payment of goods imported from out of india in foreign currency convertible foreign currency like dollars so can payments for purchase of cryptocurrencies out of india can be made through the various banking channels and authorized dealers in this regard appointed by the reserve bank of india this is a very important question can one make payment for the import of cryptocurrencies from outside india to india in foreign currencies it gives an international dimension to these cryptocurrencies similarly when you are exporting cryptocurrencies taking out cryptocurrencies from india and commercially dealing with those cryptocurrencies out of india are you obliged to collect payments and bring foreign currency to india or not this is another important question whether your export will result in any will lead to bringing foreign currencies in india or not whether you are legally obliged to bring all these crypto uh, all uh, the money which you generated through selling your cryptocurrencies out of india to india or not very important questions can there is what i am trying to do at the moment is i am trying to bring on this forum various questions and various permutation combinations that may arise due to a cryptocurrency transaction because until and unless we have the questions we won't be able to find out the answers or the answers will become irrelevant until unless we understand the nature of transactions like i have said that when you are exporting goods or services from india and now under the income tax act act these cryptocurrencies have been defined as virtual digital assets in such a scenario when you are exporting these cryptocurrencies out of india and you are going a step forward 
then storing these cryptocurrencies on a foreign exchange. Then you are obliged and you are required to bring crypto, uh, bring foreign currency to India, the price on which you sell these things out of India. Let us again understand. You take out certain cryptocurrencies out of India, keep it keep these cryptocurrencies on an exchange like Binance, which is based out of India. Till the moment you keep these cryptocurrencies stored, there is no issues. The, the, uh, the, the, the presumption is that these cryptocurrencies are still held within India. But once you take all these cryptocurrencies, or virtual digital assets out of India and start dealing with them commercially. You sell it on the exchange, other exchange. You transfer it to the third parties. In that particular case, the rules, laws relating to FEMA and RBI guidelines pertaining to export of goods and services will get attracted. And as per these rules and regulations, once you sell these crypto assets, these virtual digital assets out of India, you are obliged to legal, obliged to bring that money to India in foreign currency. And in that particular scenario, you cannot bring back cryptocurrencies to India. Means that there will be two steps involved. The first is you have taken cryptocurrencies out of India, traded with those cryptocurrencies. And if you say that I have traded with those cryptocurrencies in cryptocurrencies only, in that, even in that particular case, you have actually commercially dealt with those cryptocurrencies and you are bound to bring the price which you have generated through dealings in cryptocurrencies back to in India, back to India in dollar terms or in foreign currency. You are obliged. And if you are not bringing that money to India, ultimately you are leading to uh, uh, you, you are committing offenses under FEMA. Similarly, let us go a step ahead. That is, what you do, you go out of India, you buy certain cryptocurrencies from a foreign exchange, and bring those kind of cryptocurrencies to an Indian exchange and keep those cryptocurrencies in an Indian exchange. In this particular case, please remember one thing and that is that you have entered into an import transaction. Now, importing of cryptocurrencies is one thing. Now, how are you going to make payment for purchase of these cryptocurrencies? That is a big issue. Because when you are importing, you will be definitely importing 
and making payment for the same. And how are you going to make the payment? You will be making payment for the same through foreign currency. Now, foreign currencies out of India can only be sent subject to various rules and regulations, master directions that have been formulated by the Reserve Bank of India. Else, <coughs> there, are, there are various ways of making payment. One way is automatic route, where you directly go to an authorized dealer, apply for the release of foreign currency for making payment, and on such application, you automatically get the money for sending outside India and making your purchases. The second thing is, you seek the permission of the Reserve Bank of India for buying or for importing certain things. Now, what is the third way? Third way is an LRS scheme, liberalized remittance scheme, through which people have been making payments for the purchase of cryptocurrencies. Now, let us analyze all these regulations one by one. When we talk of liberalized remittance scheme, through this USD 250,000 can be sent. Under the liberalized remittance scheme, all resident individuals are allowed to freely remit up to USD 250,000 per financial year for any permissible current or capital account transactions or combination of both. Please understand, the money can be sent to the extent of 250,000 for any capital account or current account transaction. For this, no permission will be required. Now, the question is, what are the purposes for which the money can be sent under the LRS scheme? These purposes include private visit to any country, gift or donation, going abroad for employment, emigration, maintenance of close relatives abroad, travel for business, attending a conference or specialized training or for meeting expenses, for meeting medical expenses or checkup abroad, expenses in connection with medical treatment abroad, studies abroad, any other current account transaction which is not covered under the definition of current account transaction in FEMA. Now, when we are going through all these purposes for which money can be sent under the LRC scheme, it is crystal clear that foreign currency cannot be remitted out of India for the purchase of cryptocurrencies under the LRS scheme. The biggest problem that has been happening in India is that most of the people who enter into the domain of cryptocurrencies started buying cryptocurrencies from outside India and bringing those cryptocurrencies inside India and selling those cryptocurrencies in India, taking, taking 
advantage of this LRS scheme actually have been committing or violating the FEMA laws. Again, we have to understand the LRS scheme is not meant for purchase of cryptocurrencies outside India. These are, this scheme is available only for certain purposes or for, for certain current account transactions. So any purchases which have been made by remitting money through LRC scheme actually have resulted in violation of FEMA. Now, let us move to other aspects. And the other aspect is, what is a current account transaction and what is a capital account transaction? Uh, so, when we define, uh, I'll just take a few seconds. I'll leave. Okay. So, when we go to current account transactions and capital account transactions, what we will find that <coughs> Just a minute, please. Let us understand the current account transactions, which have been defined under Section 2J of Foreign Exchange Management Act. Current account transaction means a transaction other than a capital account transaction and without prejudice to the generality of the for, uh, foregoings, such transactions include payment due in connection with foreign trade, other current business services, businesses, services, and short-term banking and credit facilities in ordinary course of business. Payments due as interest on loans and as net income from investments, remittance for living expenses of parents, etc., expenses in connection with foreign travel, education, medical care, etc. Now, here the question is, do we fall into the category of, do these transactions fall into the category of current account transactions? Please understand that foreign currency can be sent out of India for payments due in connection with foreign trade or other current business or services. Now, when we say that in connection with the foreign trade, when you are dealing with foreign, uh, dealing with cryptocurrencies, you are bringing or importing those cryptocurrencies to India. The moot question is whether this, these transactions will fall into the category of foreign trade or not. My answer to this is that this will not fall into the category of foreign trade. Means that you will not be in a position 
to remit foreign currencies out of India for the purchase of cryptocurrencies out of India and bringing those cryptocurrencies to India. These transactions are dealing with foreign trade will not fall into the category of automatic route for which you can directly send payments through authorized dealers. We have to understand the nature of transaction. We have to understand the nature of cryptocurrencies and presuming that these cryptocurrencies can be traded. These will fall into the category of trade or business activity. In that case, you will be required to take an import and export license from RBI. You will be required to comply with various other formalities. And you have to also understand and that whether these kind of import and export licenses are given for the trading of for the business of cryptocurrencies or not. Cryptocurrencies are ultimately leading to violation of various FEMA provisions. If we simply talk about cryptocurrencies, there are various laws which are applicable on any cryptocurrency transaction. These cryptocurrency transactions involve not only Foreign Exchange Management Act, rules, regulations, and master directions by the Reserve Bank of India. These transactions have to also comply with various other laws which make the nature of cryptocurrencies international. Like in any business or transactions relating to cryptocurrencies, various norms relating to anti-money laundering, know your customer and anti-terrorist funding, etc. have to be kept into mind. All these provisions relating to know your core customer, KYC, anti-terrorist funding, and these type of other provisions have to be complied with. Until unless these compliances are done, it is very dangerous to deal in cryptocurrencies. Now I'll take one example, how these cryptocurrencies exchanges are functioning. To avoid, which in my opinion, they are not able to avoid implications of FEMA regulations, FEMA laws. And what is that? The basic thing is, please understand that these cryptocurrency exchanges in India are normally taking a stand that they are like any other marketplace, digital marketplace. And what is the example that can be given? Digital marketplace like Amazon, like uh, Flipkart. So what they are saying that they are only facilitating the 
transactions pertaining to cryptocurrencies they are only acting as a mediator they are only acting as intermediaries and these dealings are taking place directly between buyer and seller of cryptocurrencies by buying and selling only these exchanges are only generating some commission now the second methodology which is going on in the market in the crypto market is peer to peer transactions where people are entering into transactions on one to one basis people are entering into transactions by making payments directly to the seller and seller is transferring those cryptocurrencies on receipt of the funds and there is generally an agency in between who deal as a kind of guarantor or escrow agent till the payment is realized and for protecting the uh the rights of both the parties that is seller of the cryptocurrencies and the buyer of the cryptocurrencies now these kind of transactions again have various international connotations various international angles because the person who is dealing in peer to peer transaction may not be aware of the person through whom the <coughs> cryptos have been purchased or to whom the cryptos have been sold the person who is selling crypto or who is buying crypto in a peer to peer transaction may be a terrorist or a money launderer you have to understand that the provisions relating to anti money laundering anti terrorism etc can easily easily attracted against these kind these kind of transactions and the persons involved with this thing since the transaction with the cryptos may not be national in nature so automatically all these kind of transactions become international and by becoming international these have their own international ramifications they have these kind of transactions have their own uh, uh what you say consequences so when you are dealing dealing in exchanges in the same way the exchanges are also not aware about the buyer and the seller though they do kyc but ultimately for what purpose these cryptos are being transacted sold or purchased and where finally these cryptos are being taken or uh, the purpose of such transfers are not known to the buyer or the sellers so these are some of the important aspects which have to be taken into care while dealing with cryptos and while advising clients on various aspects relating to cryptocurrencies and other virtual digital assets there are tax implications there are gst implications like i have already said fema implications 
rules and regulations of Reserve Bank of India and various other provisions of law. So let me take an example, arbitrage in cryptocurrencies. A lot of people have been doing, those who are dealing with cryptocurrencies, what they have been doing, they have been buying cryptos from, uh, buying cryptos like Bitcoins from outside India, from some foreign exchange, maybe in Canada or maybe in USA, bringing those cryptos in India, selling these cryptos at a premium, which is usually 8 to 10% in Indian market, uh, in Indian currency, taking this money out of uh, the system, then sending this currency out of India again in terms of Uh, uh, to, by, by, in terms of uh, through foreign currency, convertible foreign currency out of India. Now, here you have to also understand one thing. That whatever may be the reason and in whatever manner you are sending the currency out of India, ultimately it is not the authorized dealer who is going to be responsible. It is the person who is sending the money or for or whose behalf the money has been sent, the foreign currency has been sent out of India, will be responsible. So, people have been sending money out of India for the purchase of cryptocurrencies and doing arbitrage business, arbitrage in India, have been blatantly flouting FEMA laws. Similarly, if we take into consideration taking cryptocurrencies out of India, dealing and trading with these cryptocurrencies out of India, then again bringing these cryptocurrencies back to India, whether you as an Indian resident are liable under the provisions of the Indian laws or not? The answer is yes, you are liable. You are liable to pay taxes. You are liable for violation of Foreign Exchange Management Act and violation of various RBI rules, regulations and guidelines. So while dealing with the cryptocurrencies, and advising on cryptocurrencies, it is very important to understand the nature of cryptocurrencies, the character of cryptocurrencies, and the nature and character of the dealings in the cryptocurrencies. Otherwise, the all presumptions relating to the same will fail, and it will be very difficult to protect oneself or a client in the court of law. This is a very delicate area of interpretation. There are no guiding rules, regulations and principle, principles which are available as of now. One has to go on the basis of precedents relating to other kind of transactions. The interpretation of laws relating to cryptocurrencies will become, uh, are, uh, will become quite difficult and is quite difficult. And one has to be very careful while dealing with cryptocurrencies, import and export of cryptocurrencies, because the laws are very stringent. If you are exporting, you are obliged to bring, crypto, uh, bring foreign currency back to India. If you are importing, you can only send money or the foreign currency out of India only subject to the rules, regulations and guidelines framed by the Reserve Bank of India. Else, the person is doomed. So, with this, I will and the presentation and uh, 
request you to raise questions and whatever you may like to ask. Uh, and thanks in a lot. Case, yeah, in case you have any queries, you may please ask me. I hope the presentation was, uh, uh, you, you, you were able to understand my point of view regarding various aspects relating to cryptocurrencies. Thank you, sir. Indeed, we, uh, we were able to catch up with your uh, point of view on the cross-border trading aspect and other international uh, aspects to the regulations. So I would request the participants to please post their questions, if any, in the chat box. Or if they want to discuss the same, they can raise their hand. Yes, Abhuva. Apurva, Apurva is raising hands. Just a moment. I'm, I'm unable to see that. Just give me a moment. Apurva, do you want to say anything? No one has raised the hand here. So, any one of you would like to share your opinion or say something to add to what we have just discussed, I have just said. Any comments from your side? Let us make this session interactive. Sure. So, uh if anyone would like to share their point of view on the proposed topic, so we would request them to either discuss the same in the chat box or raise their hand. Uh, so I do have a personal question on this. Uh, so uh, since we also discussed about arbitrage trading, so uh, can we uh, give in a blanket statement that uh, since right now we don't have a very robust mechanism of, uh, of, of, of laws or rather technology to track money laundering or the trace of the uh, track of the money in the blockchain. So isn't it uh, uh, a, a very premature decision to uh, regulate cryptocurrency or rather allowing virtual digital asset trading? Because arbitrage will uh, pause as a very big difficulty uh, for, for cases of money laundering, which is, which is very simple to be uh, done by the means of arbitrage. Diksha, your question is not clear to me. Can you just crystallize it? Yeah, yeah sure, sir. So uh, what I mean to say is that uh, right now we don't have anything that can track the uh, money on the blockchain. Right. So uh, money laundering is a very big difficulty that would be possible uh, by the means of arbitrage trading uh, of cryptocurrency. Hmm. So, Diksha, let me tell you one thing is surely for surely there that is there are two types of transactions which are taking place in cryptocurrency market okay. one is through uh, exchanges and another is through gray market in gray market these transactions and cryptocurrencies are being sold and purchased in cash, which are indeed very difficult to be traced and very difficult to be traced. Now coming to the 
क्रिप्टो एक्सचेंजेस इन क्रिप्टो एक्सचेंजेस वट इज है मनी इज कमिंग थ्रू थ्रू बैंकिंग चैनल्स देर आर वेरियस चैनल्स थ्रू विच मनी कैन कम बट वन वे इज कमिंग मनी कमिंग थ्रू द बैंकिंग चैनल्स इन दैट पर्टिकुलर केस पीपल आर बाइंग क्रिप्टो करेंसीज डीलिंग इन क्रिप्टो करेंसीज टू दैट एक्सटेंट देर इज नो इश्यू इन्वॉल्व बट इफ वी गो ए स्टेप फर्दर we take these cryptocurrencies out of india to other some uh, cryptocurrencies out of uh, to uh, some other cryptocurrencies out of india and there we start uh, the people start trading in those cryptocurrencies or do not bring those cryptocurrencies back to india then there may be violations involved so, and now if we take the dao ka 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 kind of thing where uh, in web 3 these uh, cryptos are being stocked on blockchain and other things so in that particular case practically it has become impossible to track down cryptocurrencies Completely. the only thing is that the individual concerned will be responsible to answer before the authorities so uh, as a way out uh, since uh, in the union budget uh, it has also been announced that rbi will sto- soon have its own uh, administered uh, digital currency so uh, as a way out can we also have our own platform for trading to prevent these kind of activities by need, you can have any number of uh, any type of platforms first of all the cryptocurrency the proposed cryptocurrency which is likely to be brought by uh, the reserve bank of india it is going to be nothing else or nothing this uh, it is going to be something similar to your bheem experience that you are a- able to transfer your money immediately on one one to one basis directly to the account of another person so the cryptocurrency is going to be another nomenclature for digital transaction from the side of the reserve bank of india okay. so that is not going to be a true kind of cryptocurrencies because still the laws relating to fema will apply now uh, uh, this uh, referring to your other part of the query that is you you can have your own exchange or something like that in that case my answer is by nature cryptocurrencies are or are easily transferable from one exchange to another if you have a bitcoin and if you are not allowed to transfer it then the purpose of bitcoin is lost the entire character of bitcoin is lost so what you need what you need is that you have to be more comprehensive there have have to be more laws and regulations to deal with the cryptocurrency transactions like each and every crypto tran- transaction has to be re- reported uh, to the government authority if we take the example of bitcoins the biggest problem is that the transfer of bitcoin from one to another person is practically anonymous if you are sending your bitcoin from one exchange to another it is still traceable but if you are sending your bitcoin from one person to another it may be totally <coughs> untraceable completely so that's that's right uh, so i i don't think we have any more questions and in case we have any questions so can we just mail the same to you and most most welcome to my pleasure to us thanks a lot sir thanks a lot for accepting our invitation and being a part of this discussion thank you and this was a very insightful session that helped us uh, clearing our concepts on the international perspective of the regulations that we have rega- in regard to the cryptocurrency i raised most more questions rather than answers <laughs> giving answers so the idea was to make it may to analyze the questions to analyze the scenario finding answer is altogether a different ball game completely sir i completely agree with you yeah 
thank you very much thank you for giving me the opportunity thank you to the audience for uh, hearing me thanks to you all bye bye thanks a lot sir bye bye have a good day thank you